Thank you. We have seen so many magnifi magnificent uh, expressions of the human creative spirit today that I think that we ought to pause for a second to think uh, what is the origin of creativity. As a researcher and as a teacher, I also would like to first of all instill in my students this idea of remaining innovative throughout their lives. But I also need all that creativity to address some of the issues that uh, we face today as a society, the energy, the sustainability, etc. So we often pause to, to think about what is the origin of creativity, and I have to say that we are not going to look at it from a point of view of neurology or really psychology. Our goal is to try to identify what are the factors that enhance it and those that hinder it in the hope that we can control them and optimize our performance. Let's take a case in point. These are the ages of Oscar movie directors nominated for the Oscar versus the time of their nomination. As you can see, some of them were nominated as early as 26 years of age, typically not younger than 30. And increasingly so, we are beginning to see older and older movie directors being uh, nominated. In fact, the upper bound of the data pretty much tracks or parallels the life expectancy in the USA. Let's look at this data a little more in detail. There you see Wheeler with 12 Academy nominations, and Steven Spielberg with six and two Oscars, and we also see Woody Allen and Clint Eastwood at nominated at the age of 76 in recent years. If we look at this data, it appears that most of them have been nominated in the middle of their lives. In fact, 50% of movie directors were nominated to the Oscar somewhere between the 40 and 50 years of age. Whenever we see curves like this, which appears in all type of uh, life activities, we ought to wonder what makes the creative productivity go up with age and what brings it down. And as an educator in a, in a knowledge intensive field of engineering and science, clearly knowledge has to be a governing parameter, we cannot create or solve cancer or, or, or address DNA, etc. In, in, in a knowledge vacuum. Therefore, knowledge accumulates with age and it is our role to help our students bring it up. That also means that the more knowledge intensive the field is, probably the later the peak will manifest. This is certainly one of the ingredients of creativity. However, you need to be able to combine the knowledge and therefore processing abilities, cognitive processing, processing abilities are very important. And for many years, we started thinking about this about 25 years ago. Then much younger, I thought that it was uh, the cognitive abilities that decrease with age that were going to limit the curve. Now that I am there, uh, age-wise, <laughs> I'm being a little more humble about it. And I'm saying, no, that's not the limit. But nevertheless, we do recognize the drop in uh, cognitive abilities, which is probably later in age than we had uh, initially anticipated, based on all the psycho psychometric data. It's an important component we should disregard. That particularly the older we get, the more this one begins to play a role. But then we began recognizing that there are other issues. We go back to life expectancy. And we also begin to realize that more and more of us are beginning to face some type of illness. And it may be quite difficult to be creative when you're fighting some type of, 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 of a biological fight in within yourselves. And therefore, we are going to now look again at the date of movie directors and correct it for life expectancy. It is important to be alive to be creative. <laughs> uh, um, but also, we are going to correct it for healthy life expectancy. When we do that, the data doesn't change much. In other words, movie directors, their drop in, in, in participation in, in the Oscars is not really limited by life expectancy or healthy life expectancy. That, that doesn't mean that in areas where the peak tends to manifest later on in life, uh, health doesn't play a role, and I think it's important that we all keep a healthy lifestyle. 
In order to understand some of the parameters further, we began asking colleagues to assess other friends and colleagues anonymously uh, on several dimensions. One of them is their potential, intellectual potential. The other one is their social skills. The third one is their dedication, their focus, attention to their research. And finally, to assess the impact that they have had. Typically, we were seeking to assess individuals who are in their 50s, so there is already some track record in academia uh, to assess their potential. When we processed that data, first of all, we recognized a few trends that were surprising. Our French colleagues and European colleagues thought that intellectual potential was very important. By the way, so do our younger uh, members of the academic community, our students. They bet on intellectual potential. However, when we actually plotted the data that they gave us, this is what we got. There is almost no correlation between intellectual potential and impact. In other words, you may have a very bright individual who has no impact in the long term and a fairly intellectually dull individual who has had great impact. <laughs> Social skills don't seem to correlate with long-term impact either. That being said, it's good to be a nice guy, I guess. <laughs> but uh, finally, the correlation became, becomes quite clear when we plot the dedication, how much, how hard we have worked with impact. We process all the data mathematically and we use different models and the picture always comes the same. It is all about dedication. Energy, creativity is a high energy demanding endeavor. It doesn't happen uh, in, an, in a flash, in an instant. It's the accumulated effort of long struggles. By the way, if you read the first equation, it will remind you of the quote that some are assigned to Edison, others to Einstein. It is 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. The equation is a little different. It's 10% inspiration, cognitive abilities, a little bit of social skills, and 70% perspiration. <laughs> the concept remains. So why is it so important to, that to have this focus dedication? Well, the will to innovate is the catalyst for the reaction. You may have the knowledge, you may have the cognitive ability, but they, come to come, they have to come together with our will to create, our will to bring new solutions to the world. With, and that has to be sustained, supported by a huge amount of energy, which is our passion and committed dedication to our tasks. If we do so, by the way, it has two important impacts. One, our cognitive abilities remain very active, therefore they do not decay as fast as they could. Second, our knowledge accumulates even at a faster rate. The consequence of the two is that the creative productivity goes higher up and is sustained longer in life. Or so I hope. There are other important variables that I would like to explore with you. Some of these variables uh, appear to be secondary, but in the end uh, play a critical role. They are the multipliers, the, the, the potentializers of the previous two. In academia, we tend to look around to see who is doing better than we are. And uh, when we do that, we recognize that most Nobel Prizes have come from a very selective a small group, uh, group of universities. Cambridge in the UK is at the top of the list, so is Harvard. And if we normalize by the number of uh, students that they have had, Caltech, for example, lower in the list, have had a huge impact producing great Nobel Prizes. Now, I really, we already discarded IQ as a controlling factor, so it's not that they are getting any brighter students than we are getting at Georgia Tech. It has to be said something about the culture of the place, the spice that is contagious, that inspires our students throughout their lives. Finally, I would like to highlight that the data that we have looked at, so looked, uh, presented so far, here shared with you today, is statistical data for a whole group of populations, being the moving direct, movie directors or, or academicians. 
it is also fascinating to look at the life of individuals and to see how their creative productivity has been through life. This is the creative productivity curve for Picasso, who has more than 13,000 artworks recorded. And when we plot them through life, we see that Picasso maintained a very high creative productivity throughout his life, from the late teens until 93, when life expectancy caught up with him, I guess. <laughs> but um, uh, it is also interesting to see that he went through peaks. And if we analyze it carefully, we realize that he attached to those that were important life events, changing the inspiring muse, among others. And there were also changes in the artistic style or the medium that he was using for his art. In other words, Picasso reinvented himself. And there are about 10 peaks in those 70 years of creative productivity. So the seven-year cycle seems to be quite well supported by Picasso's data. It is important that we take the risk to reinvent ourselves, to remain alive and passionate. In summary, we have seen the importance of knowledge in creative productivity, particularly for knowledge-intensive fields like engineering and science. We realize that creativity is not only based on knowledge, but requires processing abilities, and we ought to remain healthy to do so. But then we recognize the importance of great potentializers, uh, multipliers, the will to create, having a purpose, Frankl's pur purpose in life. Uh, it is highly energy demanding. It is important to surround, surround ourselves of a great environment. And finally, we ought to be willing to reinvent ourselves. As a closing thought, as a teacher in an academic institution in engineering and science, I wonder how many of these elements do we transfer to our students? I think that we do very well with knowledge. We ought to extend our academic objectives. Thank you. Thank you.